So hello everyone, my name is Sean Taylor. I'm a field application scientist with BioRad Canada. And today I'm going to talk to you very briefly about how to set up an experiment with our CFX96 Manager software. So this software is, is great because it's a single platform which operates our Mini Opticon, which is our 48 well two color uh, system. Our CFX96, of course, 96 wells, five color system, and our CFX384 well, four color system. So very nice, versatile, single package operating platform. Uh, very, very, very easy to use as well. We've just launched version 1.6 of the software. So how do we, do we set up the software to program a plate um, so that when we're ready to insert the plate, we're ready to read? Very straightforward. So when you open the software, you get this nice startup wizard, which gives you all different options to be able to either set up an experiment on the, on the uh, instrument, repeat an experiment, open a data file to analyze, because the software has a fully integrated data analysis package. Allow, it also allows you to analyze multiple plates and combine multiple plates of data in one big analysis, which is wonderful uh, for larger experiments. And you can define your own user preferences for your various studies as well. So let's say we're going to create a new experiment, which is what I want to focus on now. And it should default to the instrument you're connected to as well. So let's say it's on the CFX 96. Click OK. <clears throat> and what you get initially is the protocol editor. All the windows in the software are tab driven from left to right. And then within each tab, there's very few buttons that you can select to, to make modifications uh, to, to what it, whatever it is you're trying to do. So it's very intuitive and user friendly in terms of how to move on to the next thing you need to do. So in this case, in the protocol window, we need to set up the protocol. Okay. So the first place I always recommend going for people who are using the software for, for the first time or the first few times is the express load drop down menu here. So in here, if you're working with Cyber Green, the two um, protocols that I would recommend using almost exclusively are the two-step AMP plus melt and the two-step gradient AMP plus melt. So if I click on the two-step AMP plus melt protocol, I get a protocol that looks like this. Okay? So you can see that there are very, uh, th that um, it shows me graphically what the protocol is going to do in terms of each step of the protocol. And if I want to edit my protocol, I just click Edit Selected. So if I can click on Edit Selected, and then what I can do is I can edit each individual step within this protocol. So it's very, very easy to edit the protocol, as you can see here. So I start off by the initial activation of my enzyme, as you can see. So I'm going to act activate the enzyme for three minutes at 95 degrees. And this is typical for all biorad enzymes because our enzymes are all antibody inactivated. So three minutes at 95 degrees is enough time to denature the antibody and allow the enzyme to be activated. Then we go into a two-step protocol for doing denaturation and annealing slash extension. So the annealing temperature actually is also the extension temperature in this case. And this is common. Uh, two-step protocols are very common for, for, for most qPCR assays today. Then we go to what's called the melt curve, which is over here. So we re once we have done our 40 cycles of 95 and our annealing temperature, then we redenature everything and we're ready to do what's called the melt curve, which is from 65 to 95 in 0.5 degree increments. We gradually increase the temperature in 0.5 degree increments, where at each temperature increment we dwell for five seconds to allow the temperature to equilibrate, and then we read the plate each, at each increment. So we're generating a melt curve to be able to look at the quality of our data. All of these steps are very standard. And you have the plate reads, the little camera, in the right places in this protocol. So really, the only thing you should need to change in this protocol is the annealing temperature with your probes. So let's say. The annealing temperature is actually 60 degrees, annealing slash extension, actually. Click Enter, and we're ready to save that. Click OK. You want to save the changes? Yes. And now you can save this protocol file as a different name. So let's say dash 60. 
and we're ready to go. Okay, so now we have our protocol entered. I wanted to also show you the gradient one, which is gradient amp plus melt. <clears throat> and if I edit that one, the only difference between the one I just showed you and this one is that instead of having one annealing temperature here, we now have our plate set up to, to do a gradient of annealing temperatures, as you can see here. So we can modify the range. I typically recommend a 12 degree range. Where I, and you can set one temperature in, on the block, okay? I typically recommend setting the lowest temperature at, if we're doing a 12 degree range, at six degrees below the predicted annealing temperature of our, of our, um, of our primers. So let's say we're looking at primers that are, that, are, that are predicted to anneal at 60. I would recommend setting this temperature at 54. Hit enter. And now we're going to go from 54 to 66, where we're actually going to experimentally test the annealing, the, all of these annealing temperatures, you can just put a couple of, a couple of tubes in each, in, each, uh, in each row here of the same primer pair with cDNA to just see how the, uh, to, to optimize your primers for annealing temperature experimentally. And this is actually what I recommend as the first step in validating uh, your, your primers when you, uh, when you purchase them. So once again, once we've made, made our changes, we click OK. Want to save them? Yes. And then you can save them as whatever, whatever file name you want. So you can, once you've saved the protocol, you can then select it from an, exi from, from an existing menu, double click, and there's our protocol that we've saved before. Next step in the process, you can either click Next or go to Plate. Either one goes to the same place. It's your Plate Editor. And here is where we tell the software what is on our plate. Now, the, beauty, the nice thing about CFX Manager is that you don't need to tell the software what's on your plate initially. You just need to tell it what fluorophores to read in. And you can do that via the express load menu here. So if I'm reading TACLAN probes where I'm multiplexing, I would want to read the quick plate, 96 wells, all channels. If I'm just using cyber, I'd, tr I'd go to quick plate, 96 wells, cyber only. And then it's only going to read in the cyber channel uh, for, uh, for doing the plate read. And then you can, you can start the run. So you don't have to program the plate before, before running it. And what will happen is the, 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 the instrument will just read cycle by cycle the fluorescence in the cyber channel to accumulate the data. And, and then at the end, or even during the run, you can, you can, uh, you can um, uh, tell it what's on your plate, or pull up a plate file that you've already saved at your desk uh, with, with the information for what's on this plate. <coughs> on that note, that is a nice thing about this software as well, that it's not license protected, so you can load CFX Manager on any computer and then define protocol and plate files at your desk and then bring those files to the computer that runs the, uh, the instrument and then just load them in by, select, by clicking, clicking Select Existing in each of the two tabs. So how do we adjust uh, the plate? Well, once we've selected what we're running, you can click Edit Selected. And then you can edit the plate. Uh, it's, it's very straightforward. The way, the way the plate editor works is it, within, within the plate editor, again, you work from top to bottom with respect to the, to the buttons and, and drop-down menus that you can use. So the first step is selecting the fluorophores. If we've selected cyber only, that's the only fluorophore that's available to select anyway. So that's fine. <coughs> then you select on the wells you want to define. So let's say we're doing a standard curve here, a tenfold dilution series with triplicate points at each point. So we tell it's a standard curve. Unknown, standard, no template controls. So we do a standard curve. We click on standard curve. Then you tell it what target we're running with the standard curve. So target meaning gene name. Okay, so if it's not acting or gap DH, you can enter in the genes you're studying. EXG1, let's say, hit enter. And now that appears in my drop-down menu. If I'm working with another gene, I can do you know, glue C as an example, and hit enter. And then that gene appears in the drop-down menu. So I'm all set. I have my genes that I can add as many as I wish. But, you, but the beautiful thing about the software is that you only add them in once. And then you can just select them from the drop-down menus. So I've got my gene in there. Next is sample name or condition. So once I'm ready to enter that, I can again 
click on the drop down menu and I can see sample name is the condition. So if it's a time course, 0, 1, or 2, if it's normal versus treated, normal, enter versus treated, let's say, T, enter. And now I have normal and treated in my drop down menu. So I can say this is going to be glue C from my normal samples. The next step is replicate series. So this is a replicate series. If, I, if it's all the same thing, I can just say load, load replicate one and it labels everything as the same thing, the same replicate. As long as they have the same gene and condition, it will combine them. But I know this is a replicate series with different, different dilutions in each, in each well. So it's a replicate series where the replicate size is um, three, starting from replicate one. So then I can click apply. And now it's going to go from 1 to 8, combining my replicates, as you can see, going horizontally. Once I've defined my replicates, I can then go to dilution series, and I tell it, what do I, what's the full dilution from standard 1 to standard 8, standard 1 to standard 8. So I, I typically enter 1 as a starting concentration here, because you typically don't know what the starting concentration is in your sample, unless you're using absolute quantification, and then you would enter in that value accurately. From 1 to 8, I'm doing, let's say, a tenfold dilution series. So that's fine. And is it decreasing or increasing from 1 to 8? Let's say it's decreasing. I click Apply. And now it's going to be 1 to the negative 1, negative 2, and so on. Let's say I'm, I, I made a mistake and I need to make it increasing. I can click Dilution Series and just click on Increasing and click Apply. And there we go. 1 to 10 to the negative 7. It's that easy to enter data in here. So let's say we're doing an experiment. You know, we can enter experimental samples in. Let's say we're working with, uh, so experimental samples would be unknowns. Target name, let's say we're working with EXG1. In this case, EXG1, normal versus treated. And we're also working with uh, a reference gene. So let's say we have actin in here, normal versus treated. And we also have because we're working with glue C, EXG1, and Actin, we need to have no template controls for all of them. I always recommend at least duplicate no template controls for every target you have on a plate. And that's good. So we can now enter in normal versus treated. <coughs> and in this case here, normal. This would be our treatment group. There. And for, for each of these, each NTC, we would have, so actin EX, oops, EXG1 and glue C. And our plate is now labeled. And I can clear the wells here clear these wells just to clean up my plate a little bit to make it easier to read. And I'm ready to go. So I haven't defined replicates for my, for my unknown. So again, I would do a replicate series here just to make it easy to, to define. I can just go to replicate series. I can say the replicate size is 3. The replicates are going horizontally, as you can see. Click Apply. So now it knows that these are replicates. Same thing with my no template controls, except these would be, the size would be 2, going horizontally. And now my plate is defined. <coughs> so that's how you do it. And then you click OK. You save the plate file as well, like we saved the protocol file. And our plate file is saved. So we have the plate file, protocol file, and we're ready to start the run. And you just review. You can add notes about your experiment. You can, you can open the lid with the software of your instrument, close the lid, and click Start Run. And it will start, and you're good to go. That's as easy as it is to be able to set up your experiment. And I will do a data analysis video shortly, which you can also review for analyzing your data.